Oh, hello there! You caught me during my morning routine. I may not have ears, but I can tell you that this JBL LSR 30X is one hell of a great speaker just because of the beautiful vibrations it sends throughout my body. Now you can get yourself one of these bad boys and have it shipped out to you within two days from our friends at MassDrop.com, the community-made marketplace for audio enthusiasts quite like yourself. <sighs> Visit MassDrop.com today, sign up, and get one of these beautiful babies for yourself. Now, if you'll excuse me. BKB, maybe? Or, like, he wanted an attack speed item, clearly. Yeah. Um, and that's why, like, Yasha or Echo Saber is the most common. But I think going straight Manto is not worth it. It's like a 5,000 gold item. The illusions were worthless. It was basically like an expensive remove And I think Radiant at that point, you just get BKB. Then you don't have to deal about Centaur stuns. You, you can understand what the way I'm trying to think about it, right? The yeah. team is pushing into your base. You need damage, but you also need defensive capabilities. Yeah. So you, it's, you have to kind of half arse it, right? Like I think he was just going Dyer for the no BKB back. Lincolns challenge, which Radiant is not team. part of today's Four days ago. bounty. There back. have been a couple Radiant random challenges like that. Sort uh, by price, Reginald, please! First ban is going to be an Omni Knight. Uh, the <laughs> Why the did I say stuff. please? Damn it, Reginald. Making me oh, too sorry. polite. We could tell the anger in the voice. It was, was going to be fine. I'm a bully. I don't know if you guys have heard. Uh, really? I, I have, yeah. I'm a big bully. I've seen some tweets on, on all right. the Oh, all right. all right. Wait, why did they get money? Okay, this is maybe... Huh? Is this... No, I think I don't think I think they did go. They did drop pretty low. I think I think it did. I think they Puka had four hundred and seventy-seven. Right. So was it? L I, I thought think it was Puka did it right because I remember they had like four hundred some for their last two picks, and they picked two heroes. So they got real low. They got the bonus. They're okay, still maybe they were a lot minutes. lower then. So okay. I think you're, I think they're actually fine. Now the crazy part is that now that they made money, <laughs> they have they're to pick five hundred again. again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's an odd dilemma for sure, but a pretty but freaking good first random, time. though, yes. I have to say. Shadow Demon's been very popular this tournament. It's a good thing to open with here. I mean, Optic Gaming doesn't get the benefit of uh, gold or moon bucks from randoming. Uh, they do technically. They, you know, they'll make whatever the hero cost should have been. But You know, I think um, Shadow Demon got heavily buffed when they nerfed the Fusal Blade. Like, that's the thing I see in a lot of games. You're playing, it's like a Pogna or a Necrolite. And you're like, how, how do I deal with this oh, ghost scepter? Interesting point. And Shadow Demon's ulti now is, is way okay. stronger. because uh, Yeah, of I didn't think about that. But yeah, it's, it's, it's an easy purge. Yeah. It's ready to go. The, the, the dispel's there. Why it's would Optic oh, random first? Um, because they are also Ten trying to make seconds. money. What, what is your point? Why would they not random first? Well, it's more about randoming in general, right? Don't I think you get low enough to random? Uh, they would have to spend 1,000 moon bucks to do so. Yeah, but... And if they do that, then that's the randoming. Well, the only reason I say it is because of the bomb. Right? If I they, mean. I guess you just have to take the RNG. Well, like at 1,400, the chance is very low, right? It's, it's possible, it's but it's, definitely it's possible. lower. Yeah, they could hit the bomb. I think it's safe for them to, I, I would say it's, a, it's probably a safe bet for them to random one hero minimum per draft. Uh, they could probably go more oh than that my. as well. I like the random first as well, because you can base <laughs> your draft off the first random, uh -huh. and you have the money to back it up. Whereas if you wait till your uh, moon books get low, and then you go for the bonus gold, you might not have the money to maybe purchase the hero you want to round out your draft. Yeah, that's true. All right, I think Ursa's a garbage hero, but does counter the egg, seconds. which is hilarious. If you can get to the egg. Yes, if you can Dyer get to the egg. Back. And only during uh, overpower, of course. Dyer so Dyer I think s between Sanking Radiant and Phoenix, um, it's actually a pretty good one-two combo here. Um, I don't think Phoenix is a terrible random. It's a situational hero, but I think Optic can make it work. And the fact that Vici Gaming is also has forced a random basically ensures that any hero picks that Optic gets, that Vici Gaming doesn't really get a lot of chances to counterpick because mm -hmm. they're forced into randoming themselves. So it's kind yeah, of an interesting strategy. But this strategy. is kind of an interesting strategy by Vici J Storm randoming their second one when they don't get money for it, which means they have Five to random their fourth remaining. pick, most likely, or even their fifth which puts them at a large disadvantage, as opposed to Reserve just picking time. the second hero and then randoming and then having a, a better opportunity to actually get a well-rounded draft. We'll Does see the bison Well, the they still have uh, 627 moon books. If they can pick, you know, two really, really good heroes. But then they have to random. <laughs> I mean, there's I a lot of inexpensive yeah. heroes, too. There's a couple below, there's like, like 10 in each category, below 200, maybe less than that. But I wonder if they're going to go for more bounties. They haven't really, what do we have, two bounties done? Yeah, That's it? Not a whole lot. I mean, I dare say, like, they could, they should definitely try to do no scope, something like that. They should yeah. maybe try get out of my game. That one's not too difficult if you have a good aggro try. Um, happy little trees, maybe a little dangerous. It's a trap, is, is dangerous. The teams are clearly a little afraid to do challenges right now because it's all about winning at this point. Hmm. All right. I mean, well. We're one and one, so, uh, like, the, the match can still go a lot of different places. What are some value picks we got? 
I think against uh, Phoenix, you I think Ricky is a good pick. Sign Troll King. Warlord could work too. Ricky's good with Phoenix too, though. Yeah, right? it, go, it goes both yeah. ways. In this draft, I think Ricky's like it's 133 moon books. I mean, all you really need to beat Ursa is kiting potential, which they kind of already have to some degree. You just gotta round it out a bit more. Ursa's just I don't know. Take a pick a range hero. I think Ursa is a good hero when it counter picks one of the enemy cores and it's late in the draft. Yeah, when you have it this early, it's kind of meh. Exactly. What about like sniper or something like that? It's about two twenty nine. You can kind of combo with what Ursa is doing, and that Ursa jumps aggressively. Sniper can uh, ping away at the egg, but maybe they shouldn't even be thinking that much. I mean, I think we're thinking too much about the egg and not enough about what does Phoenix do in the early I mid game and how he lanes. I agree, and I also think Vici gaming lack. Initiation, stone control, all of it. They're Radiant they need team pick. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. All right. These. Oh, I dear Jeebus. This is real bad for them. That's yeah. basically two safe lane heroes that they've now randomed. It's they pretty incredible. I think, is this the second time we've had an SD random with a, with a, a good illusion hero? Yeah. I don't know if it was always Luna. It was like Medusa one game. This It's insane that they got the combo. Um, very lucky for them. Ten but they their lanes are going to be weird now. They're kind of forced into either Luna mid. Um, uh, I think yeah, Ursa mid or an Ursa aggro Ursa mid. Ursa mid's not so bad. The permanent shield removal did hurt him heavily, but he can he still have like time. a nuke. You can still hey, maybe Optic will random kill. Timbersan put him mid. He'll be fine. You know, it'll be good. <laughs> they could also aggro trialing, uh, but then if the trialing goes badly, then uh, Luna's under farm. But does that matter? They've got two cores, dude. The mm. matchup Phoenix versus Ursa in in lane. If you do go the aggro, it, it's pretty tough for Ursa, right? Ursa versus Phoenix. it's hard for Ursa. Yeah, it is. Um, Phoenix just keeps distance and co constantly reapplies the the fire. I don't necessarily agree because I mean, really long cooldowns on Phoenix. The hero is naturally slow. Um, Ursa is naturally fast. If he gets on top of Phoenix well, with a stun, if, if Phoenix lets an Ursa get on top of him, there's a big issue there. Yeah, right? but I mean, maybe they'll get lucky and actually random a stun. Dire you know? team <laughs> pick. Okay, know. Queen of Pain and Optic okay. can pretty much pick whatever they Radiant want for their final pick as well. Oh, oh okay. Oh God. All right, so Vici J Storm finally get punished for randoming Dire team with ban. arguably one of the worst Man. heroes in the game. Dude, but it will go late, potentially. I mean, we expected them to like randoming, <sighs> but they're spending all of their money. I think this is a dead draft for them. It, it's looking a little bit like yeah, that. They're it's kind real of, bad. I think they're all in here. Oh, I mean, yeah. Well, yeah. No, okay. Not not the worst. They have the, the illusion combo, some heal. Maybe if they want to push, they can get okay. an early Roshan with Ursa. True. Then they can push with Luna with you the know, Shadow Demon Illusion. You can shallow heal. grave techies when he blasts <laughs> off, Whoa! and he won't die. He'll the die synergy. shortly after, but, you know. So the synergy. I, I, think this is a, I think this is a techies off lane. <laughs> it's going to have to be either a Luna, or it's going to be a dual lane mid and a dual lane safe lane, is what Vici Gaming has to do here. I think Techie's off lane is maybe one of the better ways he can be played. Just play more of a mind play style, perhaps. It's Reserve kind time. of doable against I, like. Isn't it a Phoenix? waste of the like the lane? Essentially, uh, I, I don't necessarily think so. it's kind of hard against I, like Rubik. Quad I liked your idea with the offensive tri lane with the Lunar. I think that's a decent enough way. You get the Lunar blessing with the Techies, right? And Ooh. then the techies actually does pretty Great good tech. damage He'll from range. Do normal damage. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. some science uh, right there. Then you send yeah, the, the dazzle mid. Terrorblade great okay. against techies. Can obviously make illusions and blow up the mines. Very, uh, very good yeah. against uh, Luna as well. She gets he gets the glaives and the passive. True. Yeah, that's this is a pretty okay. good pick. I mean, I I thought the strat for Vici J Storm for sure would have been to pick second. Random third, and then pick the last two here. You that could get a reasonable draft that I way. I would kind of agree, because then they get what they get two random bonuses basically. Yeah. They could spend a little money, but offset some of that with a random and try to control their draft a little better. But they didn't do that because they just full randomed. Yeah, they got nothing out of that. They got literally they got techies. Actually, it's less than nothing. They got I mean, the negative. They could make it work. They might be able to pull something out with it, um, like techies as a solo laner. If they have a good techies player, think good things can happen. I don't know if they do have a good you techies know, player. You know, Kevin, the way you're talking about this right now is kind of like when you go into a ranked game and some guy just walks down mid and starts feeding. <laughs> and you're like, you're trying to convince your teammates not to leave because you really care about that double down Emma more. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, it can work, you know, if this perfect scenario happens. Uh -huh. But I, I think it's highly unlikely. Like, they're, they're screwed, dude. Like the game I is not over by the draft. Come on. There's it's a lot not, of stuff. It's not over yet. It's Anything can, I mean, Techies is really, we've seen him a really, really good early game with the blast off. Problem is we haven't really seen him transition into anything. You guys afterwards. completely forgot about Techies has one of the longest ranges in the game. Goodbye, Egg. Egg screwed. Yeah. Yeah. His attack speed. He's, he's got, got to get Mask of Madness. He's you got know? AOE nuke silence against Terrorblade, against Queen of Pain, against Phoenix, against Sand King, against Rubik. That's five heroes that don't like being silenced. There's also five heroes that can. Just I'm pretty kill sure no techies, hero right? likes to be silenced. You're right. Though, pretty much. 
Uh, I would say some heroes don't care that much. Yeah, but, there's like five to six. Uh, and manti so. heroes, heroes that naturally build BKB, like heroes that don't <laughs> need like a, a crucial, <laughs> heroes that don't need a crucial <laughs> ultimate to stay alive. <laughs> Very I, good. I think they're really they're, trying to make this techies. There work is in this track. a chance for Vici Gaming. At the least, they can pad their bank with some challenges. Let's throw it over to the casters and let them take it away. Our, I, I think that was a throw. <laughs> well, I can't hear you guys, unfortunately. I mean, Kevin, you're so damn quiet. I actually couldn't hear you at all. But you know what? That's all right. We're into the game. We're into the third game of this particular best of five series. And Brax, well, I think the big thing to talk about is flee on this techies. Yep. So some teams think it's cool to random all their heroes. <laughs> and uh, this is what happens, right? Sometimes the bomb's not a big enough punishment, so you get the real bomb, the techies on your team. Dude, it's actually so unfortunate, too, because both of these teams, like, I think Optic has like 300 moon bucks or something left. And meanwhile, VGJ Storm, because they ran them and everything, they have 600 moon bucks left. Yep. And there's still two games to go. There's this game and the next game because it's a best of five series. So, oy, this well, is very interesting. They're smoked up. They can always disrupt into the blast off combo or they can drop a proximity mine on top. So that's kind of a combo that will work at this part of the game. Would you still go Lunar Blessing here for UR at the beginning of this game? Yeah, I think so. Okay. They're not going to find anything, it doesn't look like. Uh, we They're not doing the no filter. We're smoking uh, Endeavor for VGJ Storm. They they didn't post it, so... Oh, the disruption, they're going to find him. The they get the blast off. off. They time it perfectly. Is it going to be enough? Pycat, pretty speedy. They need to chase him down. They're not going to be able to get this kill even with the blast off. Right. Oh my god, what a disaster. That's that. Jesus. Oh, boy. That's Icaro, oh, Flea might be too. dead. Telekinesis, yep. They have the meta. Oh, no. Flea. No, not like this. They're going to lose first blood. Pycat getting it done with the metamorphosis. You use your blast off. You're setting it like a half HP, and all of a sudden you get turned on because there's an Icarus dive and a Telekinesis from the Rubik. My God. Yep. Very, very sad. And this is the Shadow Demon Lunakama, which is super countered by Terribleed, by the way. When he presses Reflection, each image of Luna gets copied, and they all apply the glaives, so they just bounce forever. There's just going to be a million glaives bouncing all over the place, it feels like. Yep. But they still have meta, so Pycat's actually, uh, he's hiding to try to fight again. Yeah, Flea in trouble. He does have the blast off. Might need to use it. The disruption will come out first. Meta's about to go down here in a moment. The Icarus dive. Flea in trouble. The blast off will come through, is. and he will deny himself and get the kill in the <laughs> meantime. Kid track. Now PPD silence up. One more auto attack. They turn. It's a two for one trade. <laughs> VGJ Storm finally getting things going here at the beginning of this game, and Pike will have to back himself up in a way. You know, Techies' win rate in this tournament does not reflect how strong he is level one. Yes. That blast off is insane. How much damage? 300 full damage at level one. Just think about that. That is insane. A nuts amount of damage. Plus the silence, of course. The silence is really good as well. So you can't, like, dive away like PPD might might have wanted to. But Yep, there's also that chance to deny yourself, too. So Yeah, we just saw that, too. Meanwhile, Disruption will come out. The Icarus Dive will come through. Pycat's still trying to run. The Icarus Dive still will come out. No Telekinesis. There's, there's the blast, blast off. off. PPD now silenced up. The Glaive's coming in. He's in trouble. Oh, the boy. auto attack from Flea. It's the range techies auto attack. It strikes again, and Flea will secure yet another kill. Mod at this rate, VGJ Storm are going to be blasting off to gaming off of this tournament. It's looking <laughs> real bad. <laughs> That's true. Oh, man. They need to blast off. They need to find those blast off kills to get things going. Yep. Uh, by the way, this is a core dazzle for Snake, and we haven't really talked about it, but he's in the safe lane. We have the Ursa sitting in the mid lane, and then, of course, the aggressive tri lane for Luna. I guess they didn't want to send the, the Dazzle mid against the Quap. I'm not sure. It's more that they didn't want to send the Ursa against the Sand King. Uh, I see. That the makes sense. The melee matchup is very hard. And we're going to have another fight again. Telekinesis. Pycat will take the rune. The Disruption comes out. There's the Soul there Catcher. Blast off. He mistimed it. He mistimed oh, it. Now, no. please, in trouble. The Reflection coming in. The TP from Sand King. He might be able to survive. There's no Telekinesis left. They will all live. But that could have been a lot of damage with Soul Catcher, with Blast off. That could have been really good for VGJ Storm. No, Ursa's actually doing quite well in the mid lane, considering he's against the uh, Queen of Pain. I say that now, he's got to TP back to base, but before that, he was CSing quite nicely. He was doing great, man. Yeah. Really good stuff. He's got a bottle now, at least, but... Oh, boy, there's a hasted tech. He's looking to blast oh, off out, in the guys. bottom lane. He's got it in three seconds. He uh, He's pretty low on HP. He needs to be careful. He the, the haste is about to run out, though. Well, now he's behind him. He's in position. Just kidding. He's been spotted. Yeah, they've seen him. Kid Track, I, was, I, I believe, was the one that, that spotted him out. He will certainly see him now. So that'll end that engagement, but uh, maybe they find Flea. They have the Icarus Dive, they have the Fire Spirits, they have the Lift. He's going to try to blast off. He won't be able to do it in time. He'll try again. He will make oh it. My oh, my God. They just needed one more auto attack to come in, and he dies that as is... that auto attack was flying. That's so sad. 
<laughs> this guy is our resident techies expert. <laughs> Please just, he's still level one. He only has blast off. This game's miserable for him. He's gotten a couple of kills. He's died how many times now? Four, three. Okay. He's got two kills at least and one assist. It's not that bad, actually. Yep. Two of those techies deaths were also denied. So yes. Not bad at all. Very true. So this could be a lot worse for Flea. Obviously, you'd like to have more experience. We'll get there at some point in the near future. Uh, this is going to give a lot more room for Snaking, though, that they have to deal with this techie's bottom lane. Snaking's going to need plenty of farm. 19 last hits. He's got the Null Tally. Back bottom again, though. Lucid Beam. There's the Icarus to come through. They're looking for Ahsoka. You are doing plenty of damage, but still slowed up with the Fire Spirits. Fleet is up the Blast Off, ready to go again. They need the disruption to start things off, though. He's already used it. Down for 13 seconds, so... They need to get the timing right. Shadow Poison coming Listen, in. PPD. PPD has been spotted. No Icarus dive. Soul Catcher. Here, Here it comes at the blast off, and he will hit it. And Flea will secure a killing spree for this techie. Still level one you know, for him, but. Uh, Mott, hmm. this might be the single best support hero for techies to beat an aggro trial with, right? The disruption sets up the blast off. Yes. Yeah, that is true. I mean, they mistimed it once, but that's fine. In the meantime, by the way, they got the kill mid onto Ryoya. He was actually sitting in the. Uh, the Roche pit, and they walked in, but there was two heroes here. They still brought them down, so... Yep, Rubik's Invis here. Yeah, and there's the Fate Bolt. They have Blast Off in five. The Proximity Mine is up. He's fine at level two. Kid Track will walk into it. It's a lot of damage. Flea's still getting chased down. PPD doesn't have the damage, nor does he have Icarus die. Fire Spirits. Flea's got the Blast damage. Off. He might need to use it. Now Ryoya coming in. Here we go. The Blast Off's going to come is. through PPD. And he will get denied, of course, for Flea. But they need one more auto attack. It's the Shadow Poison that does the job. Kid Track walking in. What are you doing? The Telekinesis is not going to be in time. It's a oh double kill God. for Stan King. It is six to two. This Techies is actually doing some serious work, my friend. It's a leading stage disaster. Yes. Techies is crushing this game. I, I suppose Pycat is still getting okay farm. Yawara is ahead of him, but these supports are getting... Sh like, PPD is not having a great time on this Phoenix at all. Right. The big difference, like, when you lose this aggro trial, and it really reflects in your supports because you can't just go back and pull. Pull's blocked. There's nowhere for you to go to get experience. You're just going to sit at level 2 trying to make something happen in PPD. I mean, he's mid lane, but... I'm not sure what he can do. Yeah, I guess, maybe throw uh, up. He doesn't have Sunrace, so that's not even an option. Yeah, the level two is the big issue here. He does not do much of anything. So he's just going to leech experience, I guess. He's yep. kind of close to level three, but here we go. Vici J Storm, they're looking for CC and C. A disruption. He's going to walk up CC and C, disrupt it up. The Icarus out coming. They've got the first strike, off. the blast off. It misses. misses again. Flea, the Weevil come out. So far, nobody is dead. The silence will still up and die in the meantime, but he should be fine. Snaking trying to chase him down. He even rotated in with the Shadow Wave and the Weave coming through with the Medallion at the top. Zai's dying to Poison Touch. Is he really? Really? He's actually dead. Okay. okay. Rip. With the medallion slapped on him, did more than 300 damage. That is unfortunate. Kitrak now tried going for the bounty rune. Soul Catcher. Earth Shock is up, ready to go. He also has the overpower in two seconds. Although Kitrak is pretty speedy, actually, but not when he gets loose and beamed here in a moment. He is at least making a lot of space for his Terrorblade to get some more farm. Still, though, that's a, another big kill that will go the way of the Sursa. All right, so... So what's going on, Mott? I don't what's know. You tell me, buddy. All right, I don't know what the hell's going on. The So in a lot of games when we see techies, especially when you end up randoming a bunch of shit heroes that somehow work together, <laughs> um, usually he can't go anywhere. To gank with blast off, right? Usually it's just the blast off, but they have a setup for him. That is true. So, this would be know. a lot harder if they didn't have the disruption, let me tell you. It's just so odd. The, the Midas Mode gods have decreed that this Techies game, while it looks bad on paper, maybe they can get something going here. Snaking is going to get chased down by Zai, kind of baited the summary of the Fade Bolt. He doesn't have Grave. He does have the Shadow uh, Wave, but it's not going to be enough to, to survive and get the kill on Zai. So, good attempt. Really good bait from Zai to take some of that damage and then turn it into a kill as well. Nicely done. Nicely done from Optic, finally making something happen. You know, it's 3 to 8, but it's only a less than 1k gold lead, so. It's honestly not a big deal, right? Techie is a super low level. Same thing with Shadow Demon. Every support in this game is low level. Yeah. It's just the uh, the cores on the side of VGJ have a bit more. So Optic will uh, they'll get some experience for their cores or for their supports, like you mentioned. Yeah, they really need like the next few levels for for Techies now. He he needs to get level three, level four, obviously up to level six as quickly as he can, but. I think Optic are going to start recovering because they have this Terror Blade. He's farming the jungle. He's got Trades. Yep. He's going to TP top now. This is not that bad for Optic, despite being down 8-3 to three in terms of the kill score. Yep, Queen of Pain is also having a fantastic game. Top of the net worth and leading over Ursa by more than 1,000 gold. There's always that. Snaking is going to get jumped mid again. Does he have the Grave? He finally does. He will be able to get off the Sunray doing some singing. Okay, just kidding. He can't get it off at all. The Sonic Wave comes in and blows him a... Frickin' kingdom come, essentially, so. 
That is unfortunate. That's the second death in a row for the Dazzle here for Snake King. Kind of having a rough game, but... We'll see. He's still top of the net worth, or rather, uh, second in net worth for his team as he's right behind the Luna. All right. Well, we've slowed things down a little bit, maybe. Kind of. Yep. I guess. We have. The game is kind of stabilized, right? It's not so hectic, not so chaotic, but Pycat manages to take out the top tier one. Snaking ended up TPing mid and then going down. And then two people tried to TP him in to help him, but they ended up canceling as well, and that gave Pycat all the space to take top tower. And all of a sudden, this terribly doesn't look like he's so poor. Was that an Eclipse? No, they don't even need it. Flea used the blast off again. That gets him to level three and a half. Okay, we missed it, but that's still a big kill. And they might even get the tier one. Well, no, it's pretty tanky at this point, so. Taking some damage, though. Still yeah. pretty decent. Here we go, a setup from Zai, now at level 6. Does he have Epicenter? He does. Kit Tracks coming in level 2 Fade Bolts. We might find Snaking dead again. Level 8, he does have the Shadow Wave and uh, the Shallow Grave. They need to be a little careful of that. Ah, they're just going to go top. They say, screw it, we can't kill men. Let's back up and go somewhere else. Yep, Optic are in a pretty good position, even though they're down gold. They have the space to farm on the map. Terraboy can push out the top lane, resort back to the jungle, and he's very difficult for the heroes on the side of the storm to catch, so... He will catch up, and he'll be totally fine despite his uh, not-so-great start, but something very concerning is the Ursa in this game. What does he do at this point? He can't really lane. He's level 6 at 9.5 minutes. There's no, like, a single lane he can, like, stay he, in and farm. He can jungle, I guess. He but. can't really take Roja either. He's only level 6. Yeah, there, it feels like there's no place for him in a game at this moment. Yeah, Ryoya had kind of a tough time in that mid lane. He's actually below that of the Sand King, who was the offlaner for Zai. Yep. All right, well... And another point that you were talking about that I want to kind of harp on is the Terrorblade, like you mentioned, they could farm anywhere. They have this tier one tower town, so they can aggressively yeah. jungle. This gives them so much more space for Bycat here on the map. Once the tier one starts to die, right, Terrorblade can, he can go anywhere. He's going to go Mask of Manus, which I haven't seen too much Terrorblade recently, but is this the typical go-to starting item for, for Terrorblades now? I've seen, I think it's very, uh, some players prefer it, some people don't. Yeah. It's okay. But in combat situations, it's not that great because then you can't get the Sunder off, right? So Yes, very true. It definitely is just for farming. So it's preference then to a certain extent? Yeah, I would say so. In some situations, it's, pretty, uh, it's like the Faceless Void, Mask of Madness, right? Right. Sometimes it ends up being really good, sometimes it gets you killed and looks like a waste of money. They will take the Tier 1 tower in the bottom lane in the meantime for BGJ Storm. At least they'll attempt to. I think there's no Glyph, so this is just going to get taken out. Finally, it'll get some more space to work with. You are in the late game can be very dangerous to deal with, and he can easily get there with a mask command is the way that he farms on a Luna, so yep. and it's something to be considered. Uh, and also they he has the top of the network too, so this Luna could get gigantic. You get to that Godzilla Luna moment and then things get a little bit harder for Optic. Yep, there's also the Shadow Demon Luna combo that we've seen multiple times this tournament actually. I like Flea helping out with the Proximity Mine, taking down some of these jungle camps with Ahsoka, of course, having the level 3 Glaives. He's got Mask Madness, he'll pop it. It's a lot of gold. All of a sudden, 300 ahead of the Queen of Pain, and Flea securing level 4 because he's leeching the experience from the Luna. Again, he wants that level 6. All right, Ryoya, come on, man. Oh, uh -oh and they try to cover up the Roshan, but he's been exposed. Yeah, he has indeed been exposed. And uh, the Illusion will do the job. He has to back himself up. He does have a Salve, luckily enough. But again, he only has level 1 overpower, level 3 Furious Swipes might be enough, but again, he didn't even do any damage to the Roche. Yeah. Barely got started. So they have a long way back for this Ursa, but again, maybe this Luna can get big enough to make some space. And again, though, we haven't seen it too much in this tournament, but we've seen what techies can do in the late game. You have mines, obviously remote mines, proximity mines. That's right. He adds a whole new dynamic to the game. He's pretty much playing a different game. It's not really Dota at that point. No, he changes it and makes it miserable for everyone. Yep, except the techies player. Yep. Usually, if your name is Slax. But, uh, Soul Ring is going to go for the Yules, which makes sense. It was a good item before Blast Off. Now it still is a good item. And, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of slowing down again. Pycat's getting a ton of farm. Actually, doesn't have his Mask of Madness yet. Finally does. The Ursa now has Mask of Madness. Okay. So, recovery is the name of the game for some of these heroes, it feels like. I just worry for how much impact this Ursa is going to have in the later parts of the game because Sarah doesn't farm fast. He's not he's not fight ready. You know, he can't get into these team fights very easily. It just feels like he needs a lot of time to come online from, at this point. It feels like he's going to be kind of the initiator. Blink Earthshock, potentially. That'll help out. Right. But again, like, in terms of damage you come again in fights, it's probably not going to be a lot. There's no real stuns to start off these team fights. And when you're playing against 
when you're playing with no stuns against Queen of Pain, Terror Blade, even Sand King, like, how could he kill these guys? You don't want to use defense, uh, uh, disruption, excuse me, offensively either. You want to right. save that to save one of your teammates if the fight goes that direction. So, I mean, you, you start off with a Demonic Purge, maybe, but you're really relying on Lucent Beam, maybe a Blast Off. You it's really have to chain these spells well together, right? The Blast Off into, like, the Demonic Purge, for yes. example. Yes. Not easy to do. This is going to be a tough game for VGJ Storm, and as of right now, Optic, they're, they're a little bit behind in terms of the net worth, but they're still fine. They're pushing in waves. They're trying to get some farm for their Terror Blade. And again, I don't want to keep harping on it, but it's important because UR on this Luna is going to get big at some point here in the near future, it feels like. Yep, he's already starting to accelerate past everybody else. He was basically even with the other heroes, but Luna farms so fast when you pick up the Mask of Madness. Yes. Great item for him. Yasha Manta is the next uh, item on the list. No Dragon Lance early on in the game. Maybe he goes BKB next. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'll take your tribute. I don't know. We'll see. Probably... Uh, I imagine he'll skip like the BKB and go for more stat items like Butterfly in right. this kind of a game since he has some. Uh, he's got Dazzle and Shattered Demon to back him up. So very true. You should Optic. be able to save him. Yep. Optics smoked up. They don't have Blink Dagger yet on Sand King, but it shouldn't matter if they. Are can they going to pass each other again? PPD is going to spot Snake King. They know it. Shadow Wave comes out. Snake King knows there's some people on the high ground. They got to get back to the tower. Zai's going to come in. He's got the Burrow Strike ready with the Epicenter. He doesn't have a Blink, but he's going to hit on one. Epi getting channeled. Disruption comes in. Great Sonic Wave. The Eclipse coming through. Nobody dead yet. Not yet, but they will finally find Kid Track. Solo is going to be War. He's going to try to make it away, but he should get dropped down. They need one more Burrow Strike. They're going to find it here in a moment. It's Soka trying to juke and jive. Cannot make it through. It is a one for two trade. A lot of damage being dealt. I'm surprised it even went that well for VGJ Storm with that great Sonic Wave from CCNC. Yep, still very nice for Optic to be able to take this 2-1 tower for free. And, alright, 747's in the Roshan pit, but uh, he's uh, getting his ass kicked by Roche. Spotted. Yeah, he can't actually kill Roche. Yeah. And Pycat will spot it. He'll think, oh, there's nobody in here. This hasn't even taken any damage. And, uh, of course, in the meantime, Flea, you can't really go with your team. Although oh, Zai, the remote mines, can he get the kill here? It's going to be close. How much damage is he going to do? He's waiting. The Sandstorm. Flea, does he have enough mana for Blast Off? He doesn't. He needs to Soul Ring. He's doing the maths. Can he do it? Oh, he gets it. Flea blows him away. The dominating spree now for the Techies. And I'm sure Zai is not happy about that. Meanwhile, top lane, Ryo, you're getting caught. The Enrage will not save him. CC and C, he's on a killing spree of his own. And Kitrak helping secure it as well. So that was Techies' first kill with the remote lines, right? Now teams know, or now Optic should be aware that he's just sitting in the bottom lane, mining up this area. And it becomes super hard for them to take over this part of the map, right? Like. You can't just walk into this uh, area anymore. You don't know where he has mines. Even though he doesn't pressure the tower that much, unless he like walks up the mines, it's still scary. It is very, very scary. And it's interesting. I like the fact that he's placing it on the opposite side of the river. We see a lot of techies players, Slacks included. They just start mining their own side of the river so that if they ever get behind, you, you can't really push high ground if you're opt or if you're the one of the, the team opposite the, the techies. But this is a bit different. He's placing it down aggressively. He's got mines in their, the enemy jungle. But uh, he is spotted by the wards, I believe. Yeah, that ward does. Well, it saw the mine being placed. It didn't actually see the hero, but right. they know he's there. And they're going to try to, with the mines dropped down, VGJ Storm are going to feel confident to push down to this bottom lane. They'll disrupt up the Luna, who again is very farmed. Second net worth now. Still working on the Manta style. And uh, these illusions actually do some serious work. Eh? It's kind of ridiculous. Yep, it keeps the siege alive too, so it should be pretty free power. They'll try to fade bolt it, but it's too little too late. The glyph will come out for now, but everybody else is across the map kind of trying to find their own thing here for Optic. The game has taken a weird turn where uh, VGJ are struggling to find the initiations to open up the team fight and Optic. They've been playing the other two lanes opposite of, v or, uh, yeah, opposite of VGJ. So it's like uh, Optic are slowly winning this game. And I feel like it's going to get harder and harder, especially when they start to control objectives like Roshan. They don't have the greatest Roshan taking team, but terribly, it is possible. We'll see. We are still in the early stages of this game, although it doesn't feel like it's been 17 minutes, but it has indeed. Now they might try to find Ryoya. He'll juke his way into the tree line's eye on the hunt. Are they going to find him? They spot him out. They jump in. There's the veil drop down the scream of pain. He will overpower. He's still got the enrage. And actually, VGJ Storm are going to try to turn this around. PBD. He might have to use the supernova. He's just going to get dropped by the poison touch from Snaking. The loose people hit up onto CCNC. He will run. He's got Blink in one. No way to stop it. Zai also in the tree line. They're on the run for him. The shadow poison might have spotted him, but he will burrow his way through. He will TP out. And I think he will be successful along with it. So 
Um, only one kill there, but still, keeping this Ursula alive, that's actually a pretty good play from VGJ Storm. Yeah, very nice. They don't want to use the stun immediately because then Ursa can just enrage and TP afterwards and live, so they had the... They are trying to make sure that they could get the kill, but the jukes were, were too much for them. Too good from the Ursa from Yoya. Yeah. And uh, they'll try to pressure maybe this top lane. They're going to use the illusions, but that's it. They're not going to stay any longer. The illusion in the Roche from Rio, he's like, you've got to be kidding me. I can finally take Roche. Yeah. I have four points in Overpower and four points of Fury Swaps. I have a Mask, Madness, and Rage, and you still won't let me take this damn Roche on. It just happens every time he walks in the pit. And yeah, when you have some hero with a, an easy ability to scout Roche, like the Rocket Flare or the Illusion, for example, it feels like it ruins this uh, one of Ursa's big potential power spikes, right? Doing the Roche. Yes, agreed. It's and awful. In the meantime, though, Flea has picked up a Yule Scepter. His level 10 talent is the minus 4 second proximity mine cooldown. He's got a Soul Ring. He's working on an Agatum Scepter. This tech, he's, he's starting to have kind of a big impact. He's pushing in this bottom lane constantly. And now there's no Tier 2 towers. The threat of these creeps getting to the Tier 3 towers is something you have to consider. But now, Optic, they will head into the pit. No idea this is happening, I believe. Um, VGJ Storm absolutely have no idea this is going on. And this might fall quickly. They have meta going. They have CCNC, who also does a lot of damage. I think they might just lose out on Roche here for VGJ Storm. Yep, we're talking about the Mask of Madness on Terrorblade. Very good for Roche. Gives you a ton of damage, but of course it makes you very... It ruins your survivability, right? The big silence. Oh, good track. They will get the Aegis, though, for CCNC. In the meantime, they're setting up something mid, it looks like. They have the Blast Off. They're going to Yule's Blast Off, I think, for PBD. Or just going to use it immediately. Right. And uh, PBD will just take a wrist dive away and Flea misses it. So He gave it his all. Yeah, he really tried his best there, but uh, his best was not enough. Meanwhile, Snake is getting orchided up, but he still has the four staff to work with. He has a Shadow Wave. Uh, he is fine. But again, the big thing is that Aegis is up on the Queen of Pain now. So. You know, I feel like Optic aren't worried about this techies at all. There aren't really a whole lot of sentries to be placed they don't care too much but we've seen techies and this guy can take over the game especially when it gets super super late in the game yeah but remember he's putting all of his mines on the opposite side of the map where he's kind of made his home recently there's this one remote mine pile down in the jungle but uh he's gonna have to start putting some work yeah you can see it already he's putting up these mines up under the top of the tier three he'll have an axe which will even help for that um it's so weird it just feels like both teams have been kind of in their opposite uh like up the opposite, the enemy safe lane essentially. Like Flea's right. been bottom. They're both Optic trying to dodge top. each other. Yeah, exactly. Very strange stuff. Anyway, CCNC is still trying to keep this wave pushed out. Sort of slowing things down. No kills have happened in the last few minutes. I think it's been like maybe three to four minutes since we've seen Slow a kill. Game. Yeah, That's for sure. And oh, here so... is the gem of true type for PBD. This is where things get a lot oh, better for okay. them. Yeah, definitely. Very early gem, but of course, if you happen to buy a gem like that and then lose it, it's awful. Yeah, we've seen that before. Game losing. Yeah, we have indeed seen that before. Meanwhile, Snake King, CCNC Sonic Wave, that's more than enough to get the kill. He had the Orc of Malevolence along with Sonic Wave, and the Soul Burn would tick him down one way or the other. So that's a giant kill, dead for 46 seconds, no dazzle. That is one of your core heroes, one of your most farmed heroes for VGJ Storm is just dead in the dirt. And CCNC continues to just cut the creep waves, deal with top, deal with middle, and there's not much VGJ Storm can do about this at this point. Yep. Find some mines. Yeah, that's uh, it's very exciting right now, Brax. Let me tell you. He's finding so many mines, Bot. Kitrak might find Ryoya, or rather vice versa. I believe we'll get a kill onto PPD elsewhere. I think it was uh, the mines that he got. The Where was it? I have no idea, oh, actually. Okay. He died on this cliff where the uh, ancients were. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't even know he had remote mines there. Okay, so they get two quick kills. Maybe they can s continue pressuring bottom. You are still Mantis style. Mask of Man is 2,500 gold. Yep. So the whole strategy behind Techies is to stall the game, right? Yes. Like That is his biggest strength as a hero. And you have the big Shadow Demon Luna combo, which is super, super strong in the late game. You can just siege with these illusions. It's completely, it's really safe, right? Your heroes are at no real threat, but I don't know. I'm not sure how good it's going to be because of the Terror Blade. Well, Epicenter on the Rioja and the Orchid should be dead. Yeah, they found him rather easily. He, uh, by the way, bought a Shadow Blade. 
okay. uh, when they have a gem. Obviously, he didn't know they had a gem of True Sight until just now, I think. But it's a bit unfortunate to buy that item when there's a gem on the opposite team. Yeah, not great. Uh, he had Blink queued up for a while. I don't know. I guess he just and changed his... The oh, that's a disaster. <laughs> this is not good all of a sudden. All right, well. They see the Terrorblade. Oh, they see him walking up to the high ground. They're just splitting up the map again. I, I don't even know, like... I don't even know where this game is going. Flea is just on the other side of the map. They've actually scanned for him. They're going to try to find this kill, maybe. But it's a bit dangerous. Oh, he's going to see that remote mind. Techie's Dota. Game, huh? Techie's Dota, my friend. Well, goodbye. I'll go for the TP. Not going to work. Finally, we'll deal Here's with this annoying Techie's. Yule Scepter will come out from the Sand King. He's got another Burrow in three. He's going to blast off and deny right. himself. Where's the spell steal from Rubik to pick up some of these mines to play his own techies? That, kind of... Yeah, very true. I was expecting that, but it didn't happen. That would have been nice for him. Well, look at these mines. They have the gem, but if you walk uphill into these mines, you might die. Dude, they're just running in. PPD is going to get Demonic Purge. He's going to Icarus dive into the Supernova. They have plenty of damage, though. Great bro struck from Zai. On to two. The Sonic Wave on to three. A double kill. They will at least get PPD, but it's a triple kill for CC and C. PPD, he does die, but it's for cause. It's for VGJ Storm to lose pretty much all of their heroes except for Ryoya. Well, and they might even I. lose him. He's on the hunt. But maybe he's the one that's going to get hunted here in a moment. They need to be careful. He's just going to go bottom into the wave. They know that he's here. Will they chase him? I don't think so. I think it's time to put pressure. Well, oh, Zai walked right by the mines, but Flea wasn't looking. Yule Scepter, Epicenter going to go. Ryoya is going to pop the Enrage in time. It's a lot of the damage being mitigated. The Telekinesis is there with the Enrage going in. And it means he might not die. In fact, Zai needs another Burrow Strike here in a couple of seconds. In the meantime, though, pushing into the base. There's the meta coming out. The Tier 3 Tower under Siege Flea. He's got the Blast off ready to go. He also has remote oh, mines. Oh, misses. They will get the kill onto the Rubik. Now Zai, a little bit low in mana. He's got one charges. He cannot afford to lose this gem, but it's actually going to be the Ursa that goes and gets dropped down. So nice little pick up there. So they end up getting all five of the heroes for Optic. They do lose Kid Track. They do lose PPD. But again, they got that tier three tower. And that's just how fast you can take these buildings with Metamorphosis on a Terra Blade. Yeah, that uh, team fight there was so nicely played. Like uh, PPD gets caught in the beginning, but he dives in with almost no health supernovas. And then... It baits them all together for a, like a two or three man Sand King stun and they just get so distracted by it, they all die. Yeah, so <clears throat> good stuff coming in for Optic. Great team fight against Zai. The Burrow Strikes have been on point and this, it feels like this tech is starting to become a non-factor. He's not really getting mines down. He's starting to do it on his own side of the river, but even so, he's got a long way to go. But they might find Zai, although smoke he will blink breaks. himself out. He actually just breaks the smoke and just sees, see you later. He's gone, so. Yeah, that's the gem factor, right? It makes it so difficult. Even though they have a gem, there's th uh, there's still three wards on the uh, optic side of the map that have not dewarded yet. That's true. They haven't really been playing in their own base and in their own jungle, though, for the most part. So that's it's kind of the reason why they haven't dewarded them. Yeah, that's true. Okay, Ags is slowly but surely getting picked up for Flea. We have. You are still farming away, but again, he did die. He needs the BKB on the other side. Shiva's guard. Yoya will use the Shadow Blade on the other side of the map. There's going to be the Shadow Demon stand can get it caught by a Yule Scepter. And you got to be careful. They're all kind of going bottom. But again, Meta is going to be back up here in 40 seconds. Oh, Yoya's caught. Telkinese is a godlike spree for CCNC. Yeah, big pick. He stole Overpower. Look out, guys. This could be trouble. Burrow Strike. Flea's been caught. They've dropped the Veil. The Yule Scepter. The Sun Rays in. They might want to back. No buyback from Yoya yet. He does have it. The Range Rack's taking a lot of damage. Flea might be in trouble. He's got the Blast Off if need be. But you are TPing in meets. It's time to back, I believe, if you're Optic Gaming. Yep. No Metamorphosis, so they don't want to walk up the hill terribly. doesn't really do Dyer's anything at that point. Shrine. Oh, my. Is that a Scotty? Dyer's no. It's a... Yeah. It, well, yeah it I think is. it's a Scotty. Yep. Yep. Full Scotty. All right. Well, good luck killing the Terrorblade now. <clears throat> Yep, as if they could already do it before. No, they yeah, really they couldn't. Man, he has Sunder. He was really never killable. You're right. It's not easy. It's uh, That's one of the problems with randoming a, a no-stun lineup. <laughs> Sometimes these heroes that have Sunder or Blinks look a little unbalanced. Sometimes you just got to random. You don't have any moon bucks left. That's a bit rough. But, uh, again, this is not the last game of the series, regardless of what direction this game goes. This is a best of five, and we're in the third game. So 
even if Optic were, were to win this game, they would still need to win the next game to, to take the series 3-1. Um, to one. And we'll see if that's a possibility. But for now, we're still in the middle of the 27-minute long, long game 3, where there is a 7K lead for Optic. If you're just joining us, Vici, J Storm pretty much randomed, randomed every single hero they have in their lineup. Of course, they ran into the techies. It did some okay work in the, the beginning of the game. Very good level one hero, but now he's going to have to try to mine up his base and prepare for the inevitable late game that you always see when you have the techies on your team. Yeah, Mon, if VGJ Storm win this game, how long do you think it will take? 80 minutes, probably. Mm, that's very conservative of you. You think so? I do. I'm going off the, off of the game we played yesterday. Well, they are even farther behind. That's we true. Were that game at some point. <laughs> You're not wrong. They will take Roche, though. Ryoya, one more auto attack. He's going to get the Aegis and Cheese, but can he get out in time? He has no one raised. He just used it. He's going to Shadow Blade away. They don't have the gem. The Sand King is not near enough. That's a big play for VGJ Storm. It might keep things a little bit more even for the next few minutes, at the very least. But finally, we see Ursa being able to take down Roche. Yeah, he desperately wanted that. It's been a while. It has been a while for Riolia, but he will get it done. In the meantime, bottom lane, they're looking for Stan King. He pops meta. Pycat just wants this kill. Demonic Purge not in time. They'll get the tier 1 tower, perhaps even the tier 2. So even though they get the Aegis, they still lose two heroes. Yep. Stan King falls elsewhere. And Queen of Pain has the Nullifier. All right. Ooh. Who is this for? Yeah, who is this for? It's a good question. I guess Queen of Pain's BKB and Cheese. Yes. Pretty decent. You can blink in and apply it instantly. And you then mean the, the Luna, yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. Luna. And then you can nullify and orc at the same target, right? Yes. So then that's that's pretty good. That was actually a bounty we had. It's not a bounty today, but... Oh, boy, it should have been. Yeah, he would have gotten some extra gold for his team, which, again, they really desperately need. Yep. Both of these teams do, Both actually. Both these teams desperately need all the moon bucks they can get, or else they'll have to pay for their heroes at the Moonbuck food stamps. Oh man, this techie's pretty close to the Aghanim Scepter, but now these, uh, I believe these mines are gonna get dropped down. The illusions will come in, they'll clear it up for the most part. Bottom lane is gonna be the way you wanna go. I don't think you wanna go mid unless you can clear up all of these mines. The Ursa. They're gonna try to chase him. Ryoya, he has the Aegis. I think he knows he's being chased, perhaps. Yeah, he's gonna Shadow Blade. They need the Sand King though, but Zai's a little too far away. Unless they have a sentry here or something. They did drop a sentry, yo yeah. Orca it up. They're going to have the catch. The null fire coming in as well. Telkinesis is not even needed. They will secure the kill. That's Aegis. They want to have Telkinesis for the Aegis, I believe, for Kit Track. He's ready to go. There's the Burrow Strike coming in. Lift will be next, potentially. He does get the Enrage off. Kit Track, can he get the Lift in time? The Blink comes in. The Mine comes out. Good disruption save from Stan King. So far, so good. But again, Ryoya, no Aegis. They still have the cheese on UR. CCNC has to blink himself out of trouble. Zai jumps into the Burrow Strike, forced away. I actually can't believe they're going to keep Ryoya alive. I guess the big thing is they didn't have the damage from Pycat. So that's the one major issue why they couldn't get the kill. Yep, they just don't want to commit so hard for that because they don't really know what's going to happen, right? You're chasing into the darkness. You know people are coming. Still a win. Yes. Yes, indeed. Getting the Aegis is pretty big. And Techie Zags. Very close. He actually is like 200 gold away. And then this mid lane gets hard to push into. Yep. If he puts the, the sign there anyway. You know, Terrorblade is one of the better heroes against Techies. You can just throw illusions everywhere. So you pop all the, all the traps. Of course, you can't explode the remote mines or anything. But it's decent. It's more tools than most, uh, most heroes have to work with. You can also just send your illusions up to the high ground, they can push, and you can just sit back and stay safe. Yep. Even if there are remote mines. They're gonna try with Ryoya and another. I don't they might Are they gonna try to kill Pika? I don't I don't think, think so. they can. He's got I, forty-two armor. They're decide maybe they think it's illusions. I thought they might have gone for it. I mean they have their two biggest heroes, rather two of their biggest heroes here in the Ursa and the Luna, but maybe not. Luna's actually huge. Pika's gonna come in. There's the reflection. Oh the my bounces. god. Yep. That is disgusting. Meanwhile, CCNC will find Snake King. I, you were talking about this earlier. I didn't think it was that much. And now Ryo is going to get killed. The Enrage comes out. Too little, too late. Pycat will secure himself another kill. And that is him dead for 56 seconds. And now it's all up to the mines for VGJ Storm. It's all up to Flea, it feels like. Yep. It gets really bad when there are disruption illusions of Luna as well. Yeah. That's Everyone a, dies. That is a problem. Oh, from Kit Track actually stole disruption. Yeah, so they that's, have their own Luna Illusions. That is the issue. They've that got is. Luna Illusions. They've got Pi Cat Illusions. It, uh, the mines will go. There's a couple more remote mines left. Not enough to kill anybody. Epic, says Zai. There is the mid lane range. Oh, they missed a, a few of those remote mines as well. But there is this one pile here they need to be careful with. Techies does have his Ags now. Where did he drop the sign is the question. All right, split push. Very difficult for Techies to deal with. Yeah, I mean... 
he has a couple mines. It's not going to be enough. The only pile that I think they can, that can kill somebody is either... It might be mid. There's like four or five here. Yeah. Even so. He's got the sign on it. So. Does he? Did, I didn't see it there. Yeah, he just There it is. It. He just dropped it. You're right. But I mean, they're going to see the sign. They know it's like a three-minute cooldown. So you can just play another lanes now. Yeah, just go top or bottom. Keep the wave, keep all the waves pushed in, which they're doing a great job with. Um, CCNC just gets his boost to travel, so he's allowed to split push bottom and then TP into fight. Yep. There's like no remote mines over here. PPDD will Icarus dive over them. There's one remote mine left. They will pop it, and now this top lane is in some serious trouble. But again, everybody is back up for VGJ Storm. We'll see if we can't find some initiation from either team. CCNC just got a solo kill on Rioja bottom lane. Was not expecting that. My bad. His shadow blade happened to run out, and Queen of Pain's there. Right with the burrow, the glyph will go. They want another tier three tower, slowly but surely. Optic whittling this base down. Oh my god, this is... Flea is just like, please, just walk in the mines of it. I'm begging you. That's all I want. Or I don't, the, uh, Pikett's too tanky, might not even kill him anyway. You know, Shattered even has a four snap. Maybe you can force somebody into the mines. Ooh, that's a play. They also lost their range racks mid lane, by the way, in case you guys didn't see it. And more split pushing. And Roche is up in two and a half minutes, so... Right. It's time to back up. Mont, you're burying your, your face in your hands. You're not having a good time. What's wrong? I, I think techies is the issue here, buddy. I think this is quite the techies game. What's Optics bankroll next game? Snaking's already preparing for the future. <laughs> this is confidential information, King. Over 9,000. Nice meme, PyCat. I didn't know it was 2007 again. I missed 2007. <laughs> I'm just kidding, PyCat. I love you. Please don't hate me. Still, though, yeah, I mean, I think Buka can tell them. I'm not sure. The current bank balance is 181 for Optic. Okay, G they, they just GG. They what? just GG out it. Uh, fuck, fuck this. <laughs> fuck this. We're done. Let's just get into the next game. Oh, my God. Are they actually GG? Yep, they actually That's how GG. Optic won game three, guys. What a Dota 2 game we just watched. What a game. That All was right. unbelievable. That's that, guys. Techie's great hero. Make great sure play hero. Him. Tons really of fun. Good <sighs> Slacks, why? Why? Jesus. Why? 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 I don't even... What? I want to die. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, I'm going to ask you this, but I think you're going to say nothing. But any any further thoughts about this game, Brax? Just take us to game four. Yeah, let's get let's the go. hell out of here. We're going to send this to the break. We're going to get into game four as soon as possible. We'll see you guys soon.